Welcome everyone at the Country Bookshop. I want to thank y'all for tuning in uh, to the country. Her new book feels like falling uh, today, May 1st, May Day. Uh, we were going to have Christy in Southern Pines, actually right behind me uh, across the lake here, which is why I've decided to record here just as homage to the pre-COVID plan. Um, but instead we get an exclusive chat with Christy Woodson Harvey, which I'm so excited about. So uh, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm really bummed that we're not in the store, but I'm excited that we at least get to be together this way. That's exciting. Well, I um, a lot of our community is familiar with with you and, and the books you've done and um, and are excited about this this book. But I did just want to say a few things about you for people who might be encountering you for the first time as they're looking okay. for a great, great summer read. Um, Christy Woodson Harvey is a North Carolina born and bred girl. She was actually born in Moore County, which is I was. We shortly after, but we definitely claim you for that one. <laughs> uh, she's the author of Dear Carolina, Lies and Other Acts of Love, which are your other two standalone novels. Is that right? Exactly. Yeah. And, and then uh, your runaway, breakaway hit, the, the Peachtree Bluff series. Uh, before we get further into your bio, Tell us a little bit about Peachtree Bluff and like the life that that's taken on. Um, yeah. It's been crazy. Um, so Peachtree Bluff is a series about three grown sisters and the mother that bonds them and this big secret from their past that kind of has the potential to reshape everything that they think about what it means to be a family. And, um, you know, it was my slightly south of simple. The first book in that series was um, my third novel. And I had just gone to a new publishing house. And to be honest, they had said to me, you know, we're going to kind of build your career with this series. And then, you know, we'll really kind of hit it out of the park when we, you know, go to your next standalone. And so I thought, okay, so, I, you know, no one had a lot of expectations for this book. And um, it just sort of took on a life of its own. And um, Slightly South of Simple was, you know, sort of my first hit, I feel like. Um, and then The Secret to Southern Charm and The Southern Side of Paradise that came after it. Um, just, you know, I, I, I think people really enjoyed them and it made me really happy. I get requests multiple times a day for another Peachtree Bluff book. So we'll see how that goes. Um What's it been like to write something that, that creates such a community? I know uh, one of the things that I heard about uh, was the gathering that you had last spring. Yeah. Yeah. Turning uh, Beaufort into uh, Peachtree Bluff and, and really bringing this far flung reader community together. What was, what was that yeah. like? What was, what was the schedule? What did you do? That was honestly like one of the most humbling experiences of my entire life because um, it was my publicist's idea. And I was like, no, we're not going to do that. It's too big of a concept. People aren't going to want to come, like, you know, all the things. And so she called the um, president of, or the, the director of the Beaufort Historic Site and said, I think we need to do this. And she was like, oh, I totally agree. I think we need to do it too. So they sort of decided for me that we were going to do it. And the whole time I was like, I just don't know. And so um, we announced it. And the first day we announced it, I had someone call from another city and say, you know, we want to be a part of this, but we want our own day. How many people do we have to bring to get our own day in Peachtree Bluff? And I was like, 75 and she was like done great we're there <laughs> and, um, so it was but but basically the the real peach tree bluff takeover day it was so fun so we started in the morning and we had like this little um you know coffee at coffee kyle's um like little event and then we did a tour so Beaufort has a double decker bus tour at, around town and so we did tours around town of you know everything that was in the novels and then we had a luncheon and then we had another tour and then we had another tour and then we had a cocktail party reception and then like this big beautiful dinner it was a tent and there were lights everywhere and it was amazing. I think we had like 600 people participate in the day. Um, we had people from, I, I, honestly, the thing I will never forget, two things about that day. One, there was a group of women from Atlanta. There were like 12 of them in a book club. 
when they had all bought tickets to one of the bus tours and then like the cocktail party, I think. And um, the bus tour was getting ready to leave and they like pull in, they're running out and they're like, wait, wait. And they had just driven like nine hours to come. Um, and then there were these two amazing women that I met that had driven to Beaufort from Dallas, Texas. And I was like, I love that. that is, that's unbelievable. I mean, you know, you just never forget things like that. So um, it was incredibly humbling to me that people felt so connected to Peachtree Bluff that they would make the effort to do that. And it was also right after Hurricane Florence and we raised a ton of money for the historic site. So that was really great too. But I think that's also reflective of the progression of, of your readers and your scope. I mean, with this book feels like falling, I know it's virtual events, but where are some of the bookstores that you're partnering with around the country? It's not just kind of homegrown North Carolina. It is. Yeah. Where is it? Yeah. And that's been a good thing too, because, you know, I do tend, I mean, I go on these long book tours, as you know, I tend to go about four to six weeks at a time on book tour. Um, but I'm usually sort of up and down the East coast because that's just sort of what I have time to do. But being, you know, virtual, I've done a lot of events in California. I've been able to be, um, you know, in Chicago and like in the Midwest and just to be in a lot of different places. And I'm, it fascinates me. Right, the last book trip that I did before all of this happened um, was in California. And I was like in LA and San Diego and um, a bunch of different little towns around there. And I, it just fascinates me that people, you know, in these areas that are so far away, read the Southern fiction and they connect with it and they like it. And it makes me so happy. <laughs> I remember when I lived in New York, I was in just needing some Southern beach reads and yeah. I had the hardest time at the New York public library finding it. And which was such a shock to me. And, you know, that was a, more than a decade ago. And now yeah. I think people have gotten so familiar with. Yeah. Southern yeah, I think um, I think it was also for slightly south of Simple. I did my. It was the first year I did my big launch in New York, and it was incredible. I did it. It was in the Ninety Second Street Y, and I got to speak there. And um, then I had a friend that had a has a um, a furniture line there, and and we had a party at her showroom. And I remember it was so packed that you couldn't move, and everyone was like sweaty. You know, it was like one of those. And I was like, this is the best day of my life. <laughs> So were these like Southern New Yorkers or were these or, or like who, who had shown up for, for this or was, was this? We're kind of a mix. So the party was a lot of Southern New Yorkers because it was mostly like friends. It was friends of mine, friends of hers. Um, and my whole you know publishing team and they came and, and brought friends. But the 92nd Street Y was just, you know, whoever showed up. So, um, you know, that was that was more of a cross section. But the party was definitely like. And it was so fun because it was friends from like all different times in my life that were there. And anyway, it's like, it's like fun. Fun, but but kind of just you know for you when when everyone yeah. comes together. Yeah, um, it's so good. Before we talk about the book and the author community, as we're talking about these communities readers, um, I, you so graciously featured this week the Country Bookshop in your um, friends and fiction. Yeah. Uh, weekly Facebook Live. Uh, can you tell us about the other authors who are doing that? And and I'm curious specifically the kind of readers who are turning up and, and not not only what's happening on the author side, but what you're seeing happening on the reader participation side. Yeah. Well, that's been amazing. So um, what Kim really is referring to is uh, Mary Kay Andrews, Mary Alice Monroe, Patty Callahan Henry, Kristen Harmel, and I are doing. Um, a sort of Facebook Live event on Mary Kay's page. We're actually hoping to move it to our Friends and Fiction page eventually because it's growing really fast. But for now, it's on Mary Kay's page every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Um, and we just get together and we talk about books and our new releases and what's going on in our lives and everything, um, what we're reading. And we're sort of doing that to encourage people to buy from their bookstores. And so every week we have an independent bookstore that we feature. Then we do a little giveaway. Usually, um, you know, the bookstore gives a little incentive, like you were very, you know, nice to do. And um, it's just, it's a great way for, you know, people to connect and come together and hear about what we're doing. And it's been really interesting to me. I do um, giveaways, you know, like right before the books are coming out and all that. I'm actually doing one right now that I'll plug really quickly. But everybody that sends me their pre-order receipt, um, my friend Marin Devine did these little prints of the book cover. You sent me one. 
Yeah. Are they cute? Oh, they're really cute. And then that, there are two other cards that go along with it. One's like a pretty quote and one's just like a, you know, the book cover. Um, but so everybody that pre-orders is getting those. And then um, everybody's going to be entered to win this uh, 30 by 40 art print that Marin painted on its own canvas. It's gorgeous. They're, and you can actually choose which one you want. There are like 10 of them. And, um, and $100 Reese gift card. So and the reason I say all that is one, because if you haven't sent in your receipt, send it in to Christy Woodson Harvey at gmail.com after you order from Kimberly. So you can enter. Um, but also the reason I say that is because I notice every week after we do friends and fiction that I have sort of an influx of receipts from the store that we've talked about. And I love that so much because I think it is actually, I think it's working. I mean, I think people are thinking, Oh, you know what? I should support my independent bookstore. Um, and you guys are just, you're so important to us. Y'all, you know, you, you have us on tour, you host us, you um, put all these amazing events together and you're just sort of bedrocks in our communities. And especially now, I mean, you know, bookstores need us. Well, what's really interesting about that particular, the, the independent bookstore conversation happening in that particular venue is that in that group of, of super fantastic women, I've met every single one of you, uh, you each are bringing your own fans to this group conversation. So they're being introduced to other authors, but not only that, you're bringing people who maybe haven't been able to have an independent bookstore to call their own into the bookstore community and, and these, and, and a larger community around that and, and making very clear to people that you can order online. You can be, you can have all the extras that come with ordering from independent bookstore. And, and that, means so much because if pe people want to read books we want to get books in their hands you want to write yeah. books and and you want to get those books in more people's hands so it's such a right. nice way to have that conversation we always have that inside the independent bookstore which is great but to have that conversation in these wider venues is is yeah well and that was something and honestly i mean this was an idea that you know mary Kay i think sent us all a text and was like hey let's hop on zoom and have a glass of rosé and it, we were not this was not something we were planning to do. It was just like, hey, you know what would be fun? We should do this next week and tape it and like let our let our viewers be there. It feels that way. Like yeah. as, as a what as a viewer, it, it feels like I'm having a glass of wine with friends and and especially those of us who've read y'all's books or even one of your books feel like we know y'all so much. And I think yeah. the opportunity to have, you know, the off the cuff <laughs> chat about, you know. I don't have extension, which is what we talked about last week. <laughs> you know, it just, it feels so friendly and, and it's very connective in a way that, that I feel like your, y'all's books are connected. Um, like feels like falling, for example. Um, I just, I absolutely love, let's see how I can get this appropriately in here. I know, it is um, hard. I like but, the whole screen. I'll put mine up there too. Yeah. There we go. It's like it's, it's like a book high five. <laughs> you want to give a little uh, synopsis, or do you want me to give a little synopsis and ask you questions, or just for people who might be hearing about it for the first time? Yeah. No. Absolutely. Um, so it feels like falling is about two women from very different worlds, uh, Gray and Diana, who meet um, on what is arguably one of the worst days of their lives, sort of on the heels of just a really bad year. So during a time when Gray could use a little good karma and Diana could use a little good luck, instead, Gray inadvertently gets Diana fired from her job. So this is not a good start for this relationship between these two women, but it does end up sort of thrusting them together in this kind of extraordinary way because Gray feels very responsible for Diana, who is now... Um, you know, sort of in a bad situation. And she has also just broken up with her boyfriend that morning. So she really has no job and she has no place to go. Um, so, you know, Gray has sort of a guilty conscience about this and through a, a longer series of events ends up hiring Diana to come work for her. And so um, these women realize really quickly that they actually do have quite a lot in common, even though they seem very different. They, um, they both have recently, or they both have lost their mothers, but in very different ways and at very different stages of their lives. They both have recently split up with a partner. Um, they both have you know, this sort of 
extreme situation going on with a sibling. Um, Gray's in sort of a little bit of a funnier way and Diana's in a little more of a serious way, but something that kind of bonds them together. Um, and, and they just, and they don't know it, but they're both about to embark on a really great love story. Um, Gray, you know, in a way that she hasn't really imagined um, with a person that she has not really imagined. And for Diana, um, this man from her past sort of comes back and, and all these big secrets come back at the same time. Um, and of course, when Gray, you know, takes the tennis pro that's way too young for her up on his offer to buy her a drink, she's she's not really expecting a future there. Um, and, and Gray has a lot of options in this story, so you just don't know what's gonna happen. But, um, but I like this story. I like it for right now because I feel like it's happy, it's uplifting, it's optimistic. Um, it is a story where I think people get their happy ending. Um, or in this case, I call it happily ever after the sequel because that's sort of both of these women are sort of restarting their lives. Um, I think we're all going to be doing that now. We're all sort of restarting our lives. We're all going through something extraordinary. And um, where we go from here is really up to us and how we handle this. Um, but, you know, there are going to be a lot of different a lot of different outcomes for this scenario. And um, I hope that people enjoy this story. Well, you know, I think there's so many book clubs uh, who are really looking for some, something like this that, that might be lighter and more fun, but also that there's so much to talk about. Yeah. And I think um, in addition to that, that idea of, okay, how do you restart your life when you have to? Who do you bring along to help you as your support team yeah. to, to restart that? But one of the things that I think would just be a gold mine for a book club conversation um, is all the discussions about class that that yeah. are kind of undertoned in the book. You know, you have Gray and her father, and and all these preconceived notions that things don't talk that you, people that these characters did not talk about, right. um, and assumptions that were made, and and same thing with Diana and Gray. And I just think, what a rich topic! What a great you know tee up for people to really have an engaging deep conversation in, in a book club. What other um, things do you think book clubs might really enjoy chatting about and around with feels like falling? Yeah, well, there's certainly, um, you know, I, I think you're right about, you know, sort of the class issue and about people from different places being able to really form a true friendship. Because I don't think we see that that much. Um, I mean, I think we see you know, in fiction, I mean, I think we see people kind of coming together towards a common goal, but I think Gray and Diana really do end up forming this, you know, very true friendship. So I do think it opens a lot of discussion about friendship and what that looks like. And, um, and Gray and Diana both have these amazing groups of friends and, you know, what do friends mean to you at different times in your life? And, um, you know, Diana's friends that I'm really talking about are her friends she's had for her entire life. And so her interaction with them is very different than, you know, maybe Gray's who, these are sort of more of her adult friends. Um, so that's definitely something. Diana um, grew up in foster care. And so that's a big part of her story. Um, her mother abandoned uh, Diana and her three siblings when they were children. So Diana carries a lot of scars and she has an extraordinarily hard time letting anyone love her because she's just so used to being on her own. And that's one of the hurdles that Gray and her son Wagner really helped Diana overcome because, you know, they, she's very guarded with them, but they, they kind of become her family in a way that she has not had a family in a really long time. Um, but Diana also has a brother with special needs. And, and I do think that's something, um, you know, for book clubs to talk about because she, they were separated for a long, long time. And one of Diana's main goals is to get her brother. She wants her brother home with her, but she doesn't have a home and she doesn't have a job and she doesn't have a really steady life to give him. And more than anything, he has to have stability. Um, to help him feel safe and calm and comfortable and all of those things. So that's definitely a big thing. One of the other dynamics that I like between Gray and Diana is Gray is, she's terrible at anything even remotely domestic. Like she's just not good at it, but she's a great businesswoman. And she started this business when she was 20 years old that has ended up making her, you know, very successful at a, at a pretty young age. Um, and Diana has this really sort of simple dream to open this little restaurant on the beach. Um, and so she, when she and Gray come together, that is something that Gray can sort of offer her some guidance on and, you know, kind of help her move forward on that dream. It's a great friendship. It's a great friendship to watch. Um, one of the things that I really admire about you and, and saw in Gray is your business acumen. I mean, the way, the way not, only, not only can you write, lots of people can write, but the way that you're able to do the 
other work side of, of being an author uh, with such a plum. But that's not the only thing you do. Can you talk a little bit about Design Chic, which which is a life of its own and very successful? Yeah. Well, and I definitely took a lot of inspiration from Design Chic, you know, when I was writing about Gray and her business. Um, so Gray actually started a blog when she was 20 years old, and she ended up parlaying it into a company called Click Market, which is essentially an affiliate marketing company. And if you don't know what that is, it's um, when people who are, you know, influencer, influencers or bloggers or people online make money when they sell products for companies. Um, and so, you know, working with Design Chic for you know, a decade now, which is crazy. We're having our 10 year anniversary, like May 10th. So 10 years um, and just sort of being kind of in that world and, and building this business that we totally did not expect. I blog with my mom, by the way. Um, and we didn't expect it. We didn't yeah, expect what it. Oh, yeah. It is. It's like right on Mother's yeah. Day. Mother daughter business, Mother's Day right. anniversary. How perfect is that? Sorry, keep going. Talking. No, yeah. yeah. But, um, but keep going talk. No, but it was, it was just a, it was it was very unlikely for us. It was not something that we thought would last. It was a random idea that we thought we were gonna do for six months. And then, you know, we started getting advertisers and and as the as the internet has sort of evolved and changed, the business changes all the time. You know, you're always you know, this social media is the hot new thing, or you know, this is the platform you should be on now. And you know, obviously things get more complicated as you get bigger because you have to be able to, you have to to switch things up a little bit to be able to host the amount of traffic that you have and things that you know we're we're constantly learning something new that we never thought we would be learning. Um, and it's you know, and I think we're always making the decision like, do we stay or do we go? And you know, we get offers a lot now, you know, for for people who want to buy the site. And um, as of now, we're like, you know what? We we like it, we enjoy it, and we're going to keep doing it. And then when we don't enjoy it anymore, then we won't do it anymore. But I can't believe that we're still here 10 years later. It's crazy. So I know you're you're in your author job, you're having to really change the, the author promotion and touring side of the business. In design, Chic, are, are you having to make COVID related changes to, to content or, or any or thinking about that or anything or are you just yeah. this is not broken? Certainly at the beginning we were a little bit more just because we were changing our messaging a little bit because we thought, you know, people are struggling and, and our job is displaying high end luxury interiors. Like this doesn't really but as the weeks sort of went on, we kept getting so much feedback from people that they just they liked the escape of it. They liked going to something every day that was completely normal for them. And so we kind of stopped talking about it. Yeah. It, just because we felt like people were going there to have like five minutes where they didn't have to think about everything that was going on in the world. Um, and so it's sort of been business as usual. And honestly, I mean, it's, it's crazy because so many things, so many other things in our lives are not going as well. So um, it's been great that things haven't changed so much. We've actually had one of our, our best months that we've ever had and year over year, um, you know, have grown a lot. Oh my gosh. I mean, follower wise, I don't know if it's because I'm doing all these online events or, and I'm also speaking not only about books, but I'm doing some other events where I'm speaking about influencer marketing and things like that. And we have grown tremendously in the past couple of months. And I think it's just because people are home and they're online. Um, the other thing that we're doing that I'm really excited about is I think, you know, people are so into this medium of, you know, watching us talk on camera. And that's something that, you know, we've never really done before. And so we're starting a new series on Tuesday. It's called Blank to Beautiful. And it's sort of the first time that I've merged my two worlds. Um, and so we're going to be talking to not only designers, but also to authors and artists and creatives of any sort about, you know, that transformation from blank to beautiful and how they kind of undertake that and their creative processes. So I'm very, yeah, I think it's going to be really fun. And just, um, we did our first one on my launch day because we're crazy. Um, <laughs> but it was so fun. Why not? Right. Um, mom interviewed me, which was great. Um, and she hates to do stuff like that. So she was like, this is true love and I'm never doing this again. And she was so good. She's so good, but she doesn't like it. So, but it was fun. Well, I think that's such a great space of interest because it can go anywhere, but also that you're so uniquely positioned to do that. Because one of the things I love 
about your books is how you write interiors. And I've said this to you before, but um, the the attention to the descriptions of the interiors that that are in this the book in this in the Petrie Bluff series, you know, you have um, interior design plays such a a, a role in that book as well. Yeah. It's it's, yeah. it's really a joy to see it come together in my mind and much like what a character might look like, like Coffee Carl, what, what yeah. he might look like, you know, yeah. part of me wonders is the interior that I'm reading the same interior as someone else. Yeah, no, that's so true. And one of the things that we always do, we're actually running a series this week um, on Design Chic. If you want to go check it out, it's mydesignchic.com. But we run all the interiors, the interiors, quote of the houses that I talk about in the books, which is really kind of neat um, because then people can kind of go look at it and be like, oh, was this what I was picturing? Was it not what I was picturing? And we get a lot of good feedback. I think people really like that. Um, and it, we'll, we'll link to that in this conversation because I can't wait to go check that out myself. Okay. Oh, that's great. That's well, great. we've got about uh, four more minutes left in here. And I have a few questions from readers, if I can oh, find them here um so much of your work has to do with children and mm -hmm. parent child relationships and um throughout from your earliest work work on um can you talk a little bit about what about that I can, i'll sure. leave it ended. of course yeah absolutely and that's really really important and feels like falling too um but i have a really unique relationship with my mom because just we're, we're really good friends and we're really close but i think that you know mother child relationships can be so fraught and you know can just there's so many issues that can can kind of come up with that um and so i do write a lot that about that a lot and it, you know in the peach tree bluff series like you mentioned it is a mother daughter story um and so you know those dynamics are really important um but but in feels like falling too i mean the mother child relationships are paramount and you know for diana you know being left by her mother is something that absolutely defines the rest of her life and you know she says somewhere in the book that you know people who live through through the depression store up things and that she has stored up skills because she was left as a child and she was little and she didn't know how to cook or sew or fix her hair or you know anything and so she is um she's a she's a real caretaker in that way even though she doesn't have children of her own She's very um, maternal and loving. And I think that provides sort of the perfect segue to she and Gray becoming so close because Gray has just lost her mother and she's just lost her husband. And Gray is a person that needs to be taken care of. You know, Diane is a person that needs to take care of people and Gray needs to be taken care of. So they sort of find each other at the right time. And Gray is carrying just a lot of scars um, from her mother passing away. And one of the things that I really liked writing about in this book, and this would be another good thing for book clubs to talk about too. Um, I was had done some research on on death and you know what that does to people and their different reactions. And one of the most common reactions to death, which really surprised me, is anger. Um, and you wouldn't really think that necessarily because I mean, a, you know, maybe in extenuating circumstances, but most of the time people can't help it if they die. And certainly Gray's mother can't help it. Um, but Diana really helps her to kind of come to terms with the fact that she's angry with her mom. And there are some reasons for that um, that you'll find out about in the book. Um, and it's sort of like once she comes to terms, terms with it and accepts it, she can sort of move forward a little bit. And but she's she kind of knows it, but she's like a little bit embarrassed to say it out loud. Um, but that was interesting, you know, too, just because she and her mother are very close. And um, I think she sort of feels like even though her mother didn't know that she was getting ready to go through this horrible divorce and she didn't know that her sister was getting ready to marry this man that she thinks is a cult leader. And, you know, all of these things, she sort of feels like her mother has just abandoned her here. And what is she going to do now? And again, there are some reasons for that um, that people will read about in the book. But but definitely. Um, and then and Gray is a great mother. I mean, she really is. She her son is the center of her world and she is sharing custody with her husband. And that is taking a huge toll on her but she's also someone that hides her emotions really well like she doesn't let people necessarily know what she's thinking so she's trying to tell herself it's okay um, and you sort of see her reach her breaking point where she realizes that 
it's not okay. Um, and all the consequences of that, that, that will last for the rest of her life. <laughs> Well, you mentioned this in the beginning. And one of the things I love about your books and especially this book for this time is that there are these major problems that everybody's dealing with. And then you lead everybody through the work it takes to get to a conclusion. And then things are concluded. And I love the way Gray kind of problem solves to to that, that custody sharing and, and across the board. And I just want to thank you for writing truly such a feel good book for this this particular summer you know 2020 christy woodson harvey feels like falling and and i especially want to thank you um for being here today and you have a uh we have a little giveaway don't we yes we do we absolutely do i'm so glad you said that so someone who orders feels like falling from the country bookshop today is going to win a 25 dollar gift card to the country bookshop and Ooh. i believe you have book plates. If you don't have them yet, they're coming. We have book plates. Every book that comes from the country bookshop will be signed because if we run out, I'm going to ask you to do more. So we are just Absolutely. like, yeah. So Sign. go to the country bookshop, buy your book. Somebody is going to win a $25 gift card until you can buy the next book that you're looking forward to this summer or the Peachtree Bluff series, you know, either yeah. one. Really good. Well, <laughs> thank you so much, Christy. I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today and um, thank you all for watching. So Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.